the last episode, we share the process of choosing the factory options and how we made those important decisions. In this episode, we complete this process, giving you lots of details and prices along the way. So enjoy. Today we are talking about the options on our 50 foot leopard catamaran boat that we have ordered. For now we make the best choices that we think for our circumstances going forward. Okay, plumbing. So you've got the option of flushing your toilets with fresh water because the standard is from salt water and the disadvantage with salt water is that if the water sits in your toilet and doesn't get flushed regularly, it can get smelly because all the little um, microorganisms die and then they rot and they cause a smell. Mm. Our experience around Australia is uh, really very little problem with smelly toilets. Mm. I have heard it's a lot bigger problem in places like Florida where you've got a lot more water coming out of the inland lakes and there's a lot more microorganisms. But hopefully when we're out in the blue clear water is um, it won't be such an issue. Mm. Um, you've got options of increasing your hot water tanks. I don't think we can just go with the standard with mm -hmm. that. Water maker, three options of water maker. The Spectra Newport 400, 12 volts. Uh, the Z-Brain electronic water treatment, I think is the, it automatically uh, flushes out the water and cleans itself on a regular basis. And that's, yep. that's so the that's, one they've recommended. And so we've heard good things about it. We have, it, so. very good things. We're done with that one. Okay. The next option. Oh, washer dryer. <laughs> Clothes washer. <laughs> All right. So. <clears throat> Guess who's going to talk about this one? Okay. So we've been as we've been sailors for many many years, and we definitely have done without it. Um, when we're when we're you know uh, boating in the French canals, we've had to humph our laundry you know, to the laundromat and, and, and then when it's rainy and wet, you've got wet, damp clothes and it's very uncomfortable. And at the end of the day, I am happy to go out and to be salty and wet and everything during the day. But when I come back home, I like to have- That's to the boat. Back to the boat, I like to have fresh clean sheets and I like, and because you know, now, when, you're now, in, when you're in a salty yeah, environment, I, now, guys need to listen to this because if you want to make your woman happy, things like that are really, really important to the woman. Yeah. Now, they will put up with being like doing without to a certain extent and for a certain length of time. But eventually they'll say, stuff this, I'm not going to live like that. And then they'll say, I don't want to keep on sailing. If you want to keep your, your woman on the boat for the long term, make her life comfortable and give her those sort of things if that's really important to her. This is really important to Elizabeth. It, it might not be really important to a lot of women, but to me, um, getting into a bed that's got fresh sheets and it's not sticky and salty and you get a, that, and you get a good night's sleep and all that sort of thing, you know, that's really important to me. It'll take you the best part of a day to take your laundry to the laundromat, run it, dry it, take it back to the boat. I have done hand washing for years and years and years. And yeah, there's a certain amount you can do, but you know, your sheets, your towels, your blankets, and if, if, if those things get wet and salty, it's really hard. $3,000. 3000 Fitted and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting a washing machine. Yeah. Yay. No argument. Yay. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. That's right. Okay, deck wash, pump, fitting, dual salt, fresh water. Uh, $973. This comes as standard with uh, the package that we've got. 
So this allows you to wash off your decks from the seawater by a, 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 an inlet at, underneath the hull and you have you attach your hose to this outlet or you can plumb in the fresh water if you want to get rid of the salt on the deck. Stern shower, very important, $296, yeah. it's not an argument. Mm. This You step off out of the water, rinse yourself off quickly to get rid of the salt, and then you're not taking the salt inside. And if you walk inside the saloon wet, you are gonna have crusted salt on the floor of your saloon. Sticky. Sticky, it doesn't dry, but don't go inside with wet, salty water. Mm -hmm. Okay, next section, heating, refrigeration, and gas. The standard uh, Leopard comes with a fridge freezer in the galley and out in the cockpit you have you can only have a fridge not a freezer or you can have an ice maker or you can have an ice maker and then there is a space another space inside near the sink for either an ice maker or a fridge or a dishwasher dishwasher yeah so those are the options you have. We would have preferred to have a second freezer, mm. but you can't get a freezer by itself. It comes as the standard unit inside. So we have decided to put an extra fridge in the cockpit, which we can use as extra storage for long passages. We don't need a wine cooler. What I was drawn to do was to go for a dishwasher. Now that wouldn't have been an option if we didn't have a water maker and we didn't have extra power and all those other provisions for it but um, you know as I said I've sailed in the past and every so often you want to put your dishes through a dishwasher get them really clean get all the scum off them and all that sort of thing and and, and I think that's really lovely to be eating off really clean okay so yes. 220 volt one costs uh, three thousand two hundred dollars gosh it's a lot more expensive oh, I for didn't two. know it was a bit expensive you didn't anyway, know I didn't know okay. I thought it was about two thousand dollars right okay you still want it? <laughs> Shh. When I was discussing this with Elizabeth, her response to me was, well, who does the dishes? I couldn't really argue with that. Because John one. was saying, oh, you don't really need a dishwasher. You don't, I mean, like, I do do like, the dishes sometimes. Oh, you but... don't need a dishwasher. How many times do you? And, I'm, and that was my response. And how many times do you do the dishes? So anyway, okay, so we'll we've... see. I will definitely eat humble pie and I will definitely admit and say, ah, oh, I made a bad call. If it turns out it doesn't work and you guys will be the first to know. Okay, anyway, so the, we'll re see. The, the refrigerator in the aft cockpit cost $2,009. <laughs> Deck and hull, exterior pack. Oh, now you've got to choose the color of your um, the material that's your boom the classic is the navy blue but we want the sort of slightly more pastely charcoal color now you can get enclosures from the factory after speaking at length to a variety of different people we've chosen to go with the um, drop downs uh, from uh, in aftermarket because then we can design them specifically the way we want them and we're sort of a bit a different to the average bear because you know we've got a doctor here a skin doctor and we really don't want to be sunburnt at all it we don't want to and we also want to be be able to repel the sun and you know have a fair bit of shade on the boat so yeah we have certain things that we really want when you're in the tropics you want to get as much of your boat in the shade as possible so we want essentially to be able to have 100 percent shade and keep the sun out of the cockpit and out of the saloon the one, the one thing we specifically don't plan to use is those part shades where it's like 70 percent or cloth. shade yeah. cloth that's right you still get the sun beating in on the back of your neck and you st and, it still you makes know, the boat hot, hot and you still get sunburned so yeah. i mean for us that's not what we are going to choose. Coach roof, side window, removable shade covers. Now, as I understand it, these are the black window covers for the side windows of the boat that keep the sun out. Yeah, we were going to get these, but we asked around and there's a little bit of an issue of they get salty up behind them. They, they can cause some salt Scratching. scratches on the outside of the side windows. They're a bit irritating to fit and take down. And because we've already got the internal uh, shades, we've decided not to use these. Gosh, shoe locker under helm platform. Shh, don't even know what that is. I don't know why you need a shoe locker. 
half cockpit cushions of course we need all the yes. cushions it's already ticked as part of the package because most people need them forward cockpit seats and backrests four thousand dollars we need them helm seat cushion because we need that four deck lounging cushions you can have cushions that go on the side of the front cockpit plus over all of the lockers on the front deck and what we really wanted is a day bed somewhere where we could lie together we could read just hang out have a drink have a coffee whatever but be more in reclined and we'd just stick some pillows up the back or and lean, know, lean against and the lean against window. the glass yeah Stainless steel cockpit table stools. No, we don't need them. Uh, stainless steel dive bottle holds four bottles. Yeah. You have somewhere for the dive bottles. Yeah, yeah. So. Leather covered steering wheel. No, don't need that. That just gets old and messy. Stainless steel davit system or the winch type lifting platform. Boom, da, boom, da, boom, da. boom. Just <laughs> before we go and talk about it, the davit system costs. $5,000 mm -hmm. with electric winch, mm -hmm. 5200 mm -hmm. The lifting platform costs $52,000. Big decision, this one. You know, we talked about it for so we long. We did talk about it for so long. And we've never had a lifting platform. We don't know how it's going to go. But when we've been sailing over the years, you know, I've often thought, gee, it'd be really great to be able to you know if you're swinging off the hook but you don't really want to swim in the water because maybe it's not safer or, or whatever that you can sort of be on a, a platform that could be just under the water you could still be safe and you could be you know hanging out on the platform anyway there was all these advantages and uh, when i saw the dive platform i i just could see how it would be such a wonderful thing and you know, you, you bring your dinghy in and you drive your dinghy in to the platform and then the platform lifts the dinghy up and then all the shopping that you've done in town or whatever, you just lift it in back into the boat and you haven't got all this humping. You know, when you're at anchor, the dinghy's off and it's, you know, you've got that extra space there and you can hang, it's kind of like a veranda. It is like a veranda. It? Yeah, and, and I also suspect it'll be useful when you're getting med moored. You can step off your lifting platform directly onto the harbour mm. or onto the pontoon of the marina. You know, the, the, the compromise is there's more weight on the back. Half and, a ton or so, I And believe. it's pretty heavy. So the disadvantage obviously is the cost and the weight. It used to be a hydraulic system, but now it's a mechanical system, so it's much easier to fix. The, the winches are underneath the, the cockpit, so mechanically it's much more simple. Look, for me, it is a luxury. I'm not saying, you know, we need it, definitely, but it's just one of those things that if, if I had a wish list, that would be on the wish list. So the the well, anyway, I mean, this is as I said, as we said at the beginning, this was a very big decision. It was a big. It's a lot of money. It's mm -hmm. a lot of weight. Then with the solar arch, we've got that. We've obviously got the dinghy to put on the lifting platform. Um, but we've talked to Bob Ross and other people about the weight on the boat, and they all tell us that the boat can handle it without any worries. So we will see. But we have made the decision. We are going to spend the money and get this as, as one of those things to make our life pleasant. Yeah, and it, it, it is a non-essential, but I think it will be spectacular. I really do. Okay, we'll see. Mm. And hopefully it will be. Okay, teak aft table. I said I would really like the teak table, but considering that I've just had to talk him around about the dive platform, spending an extra 50 odd grand, then I was quite prepared to let the teak table go. Um, That's so, only another 45 to go. That I have to yeah, save somewhere <laughs> else. Um, okay, composite teak decking. So this is the, um, the flooring um, in all the walking areas. Uh, yeah, we do want to have that because it does make the decks less hot. It does give it a take away the whiteness and the glare. Mm. Now, the thing with the, with the teak decking, again, you've got the option of doing it from the factory, in which case the boat will arrive with it all fitted, or you can do it uh, as aftermarket in Fort Lauderdale. One of the advantages of doing it as aftermarket is you do have a lot more varieties of, of color um, to, to choose from, 
and sometimes you'll get sort of some personal variations done to how it's fitted around the corners of the, the, uh, the steps and it can be, look a little bit more flash. Um, but the teak decking from the factory is, is really good too. So. But we have been told that if you get teak decking with the dark corking, then um, that tends to be a lot hotter than if you have the white corking. Okay, so we're going to get it done, we'll get the leopard teak with the white corking. Yeah, yep. then okay. it's done by the time it arrives. Okay, great. Sales and rigging, very difficult to decide what to get. Um, the boat obviously comes with a Genoa and a mainsail. We do want um, some larger sail off a bowsprit, so we have decided to go with the Code Zero, which is a light all-round sail for when the winds are lighter to give us more sail area to just drive us a bit faster. But we are going to get a spinnaker down the track, but we've got to decide what sort of spinnaker we're going to get, the asymmetrical or the parasailers. Um, we need to look into that going forward. So I've got a friend that's done around the world arc, and they were just so impressed with the parasailers that they used. They said these are all the time, it was really easy mm -hmm. and fantastic sailing. Quite you can, too. Yeah, you can sail all sorts of different, and when the wind rises, it just feels wind. Mm -hmm. but you can also get all sorts of high performance sails, but what I do want to get is get some square, square top, top main mm -hmm. uh, with a carver hook. It does give you extra performance given that the sail, you lose a bit of um, sail area because. With the flybridge, the boom is lifted up to head height, essentially two meters. Um, so with an extra bit of volume up at the top, the square top will drive the boat better. The boat comes with a standard 55 pound delta anchor. I'm not particularly happy with that. We're gonna get either a Rockner or a Mantis as our main anchor and we'll use this one as the spare. Okay, we also want 100 meters of chain because if if you go any less for longer distance sailing, there's going to be times or big storms where you really need all of your chain out. Mm -hmm. Anchor, bridle, shackles and hook, yes we need that obviously. Mm -hmm. um, catamarans have to have a bridle, yeah. you can make it yourself, it costs $420 and then the fenders and lines come with the boat, so we need yeah. that, $800. Transport factory documentation commissioning package, $19,000. You have no choice with this, you have to have that. Supply of Australian compliant equipment, electric toilet options for all heads must be taken. The US Coast Guard safety package is the eight-man life raft, so that's $4,700. There's a CE, which I think is a European safety package. If you have the boat delivered at Cape Town, well, that costs $4,800. If it's delivered by sea, it costs $34,000. If it's delivered by a ship, it costs $51,000. Uh, commissioning of the boat after delivery is $9,500, and that's what just catamarans do. So you have to get that, and you have to decide, are you gonna pick it up in, uh, in um, Cape Town and save yourself about $30,000 if you sail it. We decided we really wanted to do the Bahamas first, and we wanted to do our shakedown cruise at the Bahamas, do a, a season or two around there. And the other bit of um, advice I'd probably give is if you don't know what a line item means, call Bob Ross and ask him. They're very helpful. At the end. So, you know, at the end of the day, all you can do is make the decisions based on the information you have and the resources you have in front of you at that time. I know it's been a really long video. I hope it's been really uh, useful for anybody. Give us a like, it really does help the channel. Yeah, so like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video, guys. Yeah, so bye for now. All the best, bye guys. If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, Subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and health from the Barefoot Doctors. It's